is my monthly coaching call. And basically, this is a coaching webinar to keep you on track when you attend the Marketing Mastery Gateway Seminar. My goal is to make sure that you take the information you learned and keep using it on a regular basis to keep getting better, to improve month in and month out so that your productivity as a real estate professional goes up. So my goal is to keep moving you forward. I also want to make sure that you don't feel isolated alone. So many times agents tell me, well, Greg, I get back to the office and all the negative Nellies are running around and I feel like I'm the only one that's approaching real estate from a marketing perspective. And I don't want you to realize that, I want you to realize you're not the only one. There's lots of agents out there moving forward in the same way. I also want to make sure that you hold yourself accountable for making progress each and every day, each and every week, and each and every month. I also want to give you new ideas, information. This month, I want to talk about practical time management, how to make sure you're moving forward effectively. And I will tell you that this is one of the great things that I've found will help you execute the ideas, the concepts from the seminar, if we will use the information that we're going to talk about here today. First of all, I'm going to start with my book of the month. And uh, since we're talking about practical time management, to me, one of the best books on time management ever written is Getting It Things Done by David Allen. I will tell you, I've read lots of time management books. This one is the most practical in that it really helps you not focus on time, but it teaches you how to manage your activities. And that's really the bottom line, and that's going to be one of the subjects we're going to talk about today. So this is a book that will really help you get the highest productivity out of yourself as a real estate professional. Now, when we talk about time management or activity management, so many agents get a little bit uh, overwhelmed. They've tried a variety of different time management programs and it doesn't seem to really work for them. What I first of all want you to understand that time management is really not time management, it's life management. This is your life, this is the very core of your existence is learning how to manage what you do with your time. Now, the first thing I want you to know is this. I'm gonna give you some ideas today, but like always, I want you to make sure that you use what is practical for you. I have some solutions, some things that I found work for me. They may not work for everybody. They work for a lot of other agents, but you need to sort of make sure you figure out what's going to work for you. I don't believe I have the answers for everybody. So what I want you to do is make sure that you're a student, not a follower. Listen to two or three people, figure out what makes sense for you, try things. If it works, great. If it doesn't, move on. Whatever you do, though, I want to make sure that you do it and it's a product for your own conclusion that this is the right thing for you in your plan. So to start off today, I want you to realize that I believe there is no such thing as time management. If you think about it, time management would be how do you save time and then use it later? See, there's not a possibility to manage time. You, you get to a point in a day, you say, well, gosh, I've got an extra five minutes here. I think I'm going to save that for later. That would be time management. You could manage the time that you have, use it when you wanted it. Pull it out and say, well, I don't need these five minutes, so I'm just going to collapse those. Oh, I'm going to expand those five minutes because I need 10 minutes here instead of five. That would be time management. The reality is, is that Nobody can manage time. Here's the interesting thing. I found rich people, poor people, happy people, sad, relaxed, stressed, successful, unsuccessful people. Everyone has exactly the same amount of time. Now, I used to think that rich people, successful people, had more time than I did. Jim Zerone said, Greg, no, everybody's got the same amount of time. Now, if... Rich people, poor people, all have the same amount of time. What's the difference? And I will tell you the biggest difference between success, failure, happy, unhappy. It's what you do with your time. It's what I call 
activity management. The only thing that you can actually manage is how you decide to use the 24 hours that you have like everyone else. Understand, you don't have any more than anybody else. You don't have any less than anybody else. So when you say, gosh, I wish I had more time, you're a little deluded because there is no more time. Now, if you say it often enough, they'll come and take you away. But realize that nobody has any more time than you. I hear people all the time say, well, gosh, I wish I had that person's time. No, we all have the same amount. We're all on a plain level playing field here. So what I want you to do is get out of the mindset of thinking about time and think about activity management. And the key to think about is this. What activities do you want to do with this day of your life? And I've always found it very useful if I think today is a day of my life. And I want to figure out how to get the most out of today. And I think we forget this. This is one of the things I talk about at the seminar, the subtlety of the day. We think, gosh, what I do today doesn't seem to matter because it's so small. I can't seem to make that much progress in a day. But the reality is, is that our life is made up of days. Whether we have an incredible life or an average life just depends upon how we make each and every day. If we have a whole series of incredible days, we have an incredible life. If we have a series of average days, we have an average life. It's that simple. And yet we want to make it more complex. We say, well, gosh, I know my days are being average here a lot for the last couple of years, but I'm working on it. Well, are you really working on it? Or are you moving the direction that you want to go? The first thing I've found is that if you look at yesterday it'll give you a great insight into what you truly value in your life. This is one of the hardest lessons for me to learn. But if you take a look at what you did yesterday, that is the most accurate reflection of what's really important to you. So many agents say, well, Greg, it's really important that I achieve my goals, that I make X number of dollars for my family, that I do this and this and this. But then you look at the day and they spend it drinking coffee and chatting and doing a wide variety of things that are definitely not going to move them in the direction that they want to go. And I find a lot of people give it lip service. So start by taking a hard look and say, gosh, over the last few months, what did I really do? And be honest with yourself about that's probably what you value the highest. Now, I found that so many people argue with this, but I want you to realize that each day we decide how to use our time. We can waste it, kill it, use it. We can invest it, but I want you to know you never even get a second opportunity to get back even a second. You've got to make sure that you use the day that you're in effectively. So many agents, well, Greg, it's, it's really not that way. If you don't feel like your actions today are really moving you where you want to go, I have a suggestion that it's because you're not clear on what your values are. See, if you're clear on your values, what you're going to do today, this minute, next minute, next 15 minutes, next hour, throughout the day is very clear. But if you're not clear on your values, it's easy to just let things drift. So one of the first things I want you to do is start clarifying your values. If you will clarify your values and objectives for your life, if you get crystal clear about what is important to you, then activity management will never be valuable for you. It'll be pointless because you've got to be clear, where am I going? If you don't have an idea of where you want to be, where you're going, it doesn't really matter. I just, I'm just getting through the day. If you don't have a vision, a, an output that says, gosh, three years from now, five years from now, I want to be here. It doesn't really matter. So just keep going through the day. What I learned though, is that we all have got to suffer one of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Now, what I found is that discipline weighs ounces. 
Yes, it's difficult, it's challenging at times, and it's a pain. You gotta say, what's it really important to me? And gosh, I'd, I'd really like to go have some coffee, I'd like to go do this, I'd like to chat. Yes, but what I found is that when we don't do the things that we know we need to, the regret weighs tons. I've talked to so many people that says, gosh, I wish I would have done this. I'm, I'm so sad that I didn't do this. The reality is, is that it starts with little daily disciplines. We talked about this at the seminar. Little disciplines beget bigger disciplines. Every discipline affects every other discipline. You've got to start small. And that's what I really want you to start with is I don't want you to try today to say, gosh, let me micromanage my entire life because that'll lead to failure. What you want to do is say, how do I just get clear on my values? What's important to me so that now I can translate it into activities over today, this week, this month that will move me in the directions that make the biggest difference. I want you to realize what we're really talking about here is your life management. Life management at its very best is always a balancing act between living your present what's in it for me right this moment value and your future values. What am I trying to accomplish in the long run? There's always something fun that you could go do right now. The question is, will you get more value, more satisfaction if you postpone that? Now, this is interesting. The research shows that the people that are able to learn delayed gratification tend to live longer, actually healthier lives, they're happier, and they accomplish more. So I really believe that learning how to delay your immediate gratification for the long term is a very powerful part of your life and it will produce great results for you. The key is to make sure that you're thinking about it. Now, the best way to learn to create delayed gratification or how to delay your gratification is to think about what you really want. What's the future benefit? Again, it comes back to that clarity of vision. Again, we talked about this at the seminar. I go through and gave you U squared and said, you know, really work on your five-year vision. What do you want? Where do you want to be? Why do you want to be it? Again, this is all tied together because without those things, activity management, life management doesn't have a value. I also want you to give up on the idea that you can ever have a perfect day. So many agents believe they're trying to get through and say, how do, I, how do I plan the perfect day, the perfect marketing plan, the perfect this? Perfection is not a worthwhile pursuit. If you will just get better, if you'll just say, I'm gonna do what I can without worrying about being perfect, you're gonna make great progress. When we believe that we have to be perfect or that we even can be perfect, we attach our self-worth as a person to the outcome and we end up procrastinating, we mentally beat ourselves to death, and that's not a good place to be. So give up on the idea that you can ever be perfect. Now, you are never gonna have all the information you'd like to have. You're never gonna be able to gather all the key information, but what I want you to do is just get what you can and then decide. Successful people make quick decisions and move on. Unsuccessful people take a long time to make a decision, they're slow at making decisions and they change their mind fast. If you will just decide and make the next decision and move on, it will make a huge difference. So now let's get down to the real practical stuff. The first thing I want you to do is really master the Prado principle, the 80-20 rule. We've all heard this in a variety of ways, but I will tell you the 80-20 rule is so incredibly valuable and useful. First of all, Jim Rohn said, Greg, in anything in life, 20% of your activity produces 80% of the results. Now, this is true in your real estate career. It's true in your personal life. It's true in almost every aspect. A few things, three, four, five things make the biggest difference. And if you will focus on those key things, you will make great progress. And 80% of your activity only produces 20% of the results. So the key is to, how do I focus on doing less of what doesn't matter 
and more of what does matter. The 80-20 rule truly helps you separate the majors and minors. There are some things in life that are major, and you've got to be focused on those. Some things in your marketing, your prospecting, those are major, and you've got to spend major time on them. And if you will do that, it's incredibly valuable. But what I want to know is the things that are truly important, valuable, produce major results, are never urgent. They're never going to come screaming at you. See, the 80% that really doesn't matter is usually urgent. It's coming at you. And so what I want you to do is really think about what's major, what's minor. And if you will keep this in mind, make a list of what's the major things in your career that you want to focus on, what's the major things in your personal life, in your relationships, in every aspect, so that you have those, you know, four to six things, and it's not always four, it's not always six, it's, you know, it's a few things, it's those 20% of activities that create the greatest result. Over the long run, ask yourself, what are the little things that will make the biggest difference in how your office runs? how you're doing business. This will help you make sure that you don't get confused between movement and achievement. And this is where I find a lot of people get faked out. They're busy and they say, oh gosh, I can't believe how busy I am. Well, yes, there's always activity. There's always things to be doing, but activity is not achievement. And I want you to make sure you're focused on the things that make the biggest impact in your achievement so that you're working at doing the right things. Now, you've got to do some thought process about this so that you know, gosh, is this really important? This is critical to think through. If you will get in the habit of spending 80% of your day on the top 20% of your activities, the results you produce over the long run will be absolutely incredible. Unfortunately, most of us are spending 80% of our time on the 80% of the activities that just don't make that big of a difference. Yes, we're doing a little bit of those important things, but it's not nearly enough. So what I want you to do is just start realizing there's a lot of things you don't have to do. Drop them. The world will not come to a close, a stop, if you stop doing some of those activities that just really don't make a difference in the quality of your life, that's critical. Start by asking clarifying questions before you take action. What I mean by this is this. Before you launch into any action, look at the entire problem. Peel the onion is what I call it. And think about what are the consequences of this action. Most of us, act too fast. We don't think it through long enough before we just jump into a solution. The best actions are normally two or three layers deep. Here's what I found. Every time I've just jumped in, tried to solve a problem quickly, it comes back to bite me. Because I really didn't solve the problem. I solved the surface layer, but there's two or three layers, and now I've got it to take the time to solve the next layer and the next layer, where if I would have taken a little bit of time up front to say, gosh, what's really the problem here? And taken time to drill down, figure out, okay, this client is saying this is happening. I'm trying to fix that problem. But I take a step back and say, okay, is that really the problem? Is that really what's going on? Is there anything else bothering you, Mr. Client? And just ask some clarifying questions so that you really have a clear understanding of what the concern is. I have found that a lot of times clients have a concern that on the surface seems minor, but as you drill down into it, it can become bigger. And if you find out quicker, you understand it, you can usually solve it. If you wait, it always becomes bigger and more difficult to challenge or to tackle. So that's why it's critical to think through and figure out what's the real problem here. Always ask, what are the issues behind this issue? Now, here's the funny thing is that I've always found that, gosh, I want to reach the conclusion, the answer so quickly. I want to solve the problem. 
But if I don't take the time to say, what's the issue behind this? In the end, it's going to end up eating up a lot more time. And I know this seems counterintuitive because it seems like, gosh, Greg, what, what you're asking me to do is going to take more time initially. Yes. And at first it feels overwhelming, but the reality is that you end up saving much more time because you get down to the core issue the first time you deal with something. And one of the core principles you'll see throughout all the time management books, literature, is that you need to figure out how to deal with things once. The more you go through things, save them, debate them, the longer you take to make a decision, the more you're going to waste time in every aspect of your life. That's why you want to just look at it, analyze it, ask the clarifying question, say, what's the real issue here? Go through it, give it your best shot, and then make a decision. This makes the best way to get forward in your effectiveness. One of the best ways to do this is to do what I call learning to think on paper. And I want to give you some very practical tips here that if you will do, can have a huge impact on your life. This can make such a big difference. First of all, whenever you write things down, the research on our body shows that by physically writing, the act of writing it out on paper helps our brain process it gets every aspect of our mind going into it, so it helps us clarify it, it helps us remember. Also, if you write down what the problem is, I found that in the act of writing it, it will often clarify it. Questions will come up. It will help you avoid mistakes. Now again, Aiden always said, well, Greg, this is going to take more time. Yes. In the short term, it will take more time. In the long term, it's going to save you a significant amount of time because you're going to make better decisions. It's always that trade-off of short-term gain versus long-term gain. Think long-term. Think what the value is. One of the best things I recommend is start by keeping a journal. Carry a journal around with you. It has a huge impact. I will tell you, I have a journal with me, and I always use it. It has a huge impact on my life. Jim was big on journals. And what I want you to do is buy a journal, just a blank book. And at the beginning, put your name, address, contact information. So if you lose it, people can contact with you. And then leave about uh, 15, 20 pages of blank spot. This is so as you go through your journal, as you start writing, you can create an index. And what you want to do is put page numbers on all your pages, and now you start going through it. For the day, you write a variety of notes. You're talking to a client. You've got this. Now, at the end of the day, go back and say, gosh, this is something I'm probably going to need to remember. This is an activity. And go back to the beginning and put page 25. Talk with Janet about exchange students what we need to do, and summarize just the key details and what page numbers it's on. So what you're going to do now is have this journal and the key information that you're probably going to need to go back to at some point in time will be right in the index at the front. Now, this takes a little bit more time, but I found it's incredibly useful. Otherwise, before I did this, I'd have my journal and now I'd be going through page after page, looking, reading, trying to figure out where is this. By having a little index that you're creating as you write the journal, it's incredibly powerful. A journal truly helps you capture your ideas. And it also gives your mind space. It allows you to think outside of the box, look for solutions, because you can jot it down, get it onto paper, and now your mind can start thinking about other ways of dealing with it. This is absolutely incredible. A journal also helps you capture what is going on in your life so you can review it. Before I kept a journal, what I found I would do is repeat many of the same mistakes over and over again. This is especially true in my personal relationships. I'd have the same argument with my wife. I'd have the same disagreement with my children. Once I actually 
then had the disagreement, wrote down, okay, here's what happened, started writing down, here's my perception of it, and then reviewing it, I was much better at now changing my behavior in future activities. This is the same with clients. I used to have certain clients that would have the same challenges over and over again. When I started writing down, okay, here's the challenge, here's thinking about it, getting it down on paper, then reviewing it, what I found is I found new solutions to those problems. How to talk to people and I would change my behavior, which in the end saved me huge amounts of time. Again, this is so powerful. A journal will also be one of the treasures you leave to your kids, a legacy of your life's learning. This is incredibly powerful. I know that when I pass on, my kids are going to be probably more excited about my journals than the things I leave them. Because my journal is a reflection of who I am. Here's the challenges, the problems. Here's the solutions I went through. Here's what I am, who I am as a person. And I will tell you, if you picked up one of my journals, it would not take long for you to read through it and say, God, oh, there's some valuable information. This is useful. This is valuable. I want you to know you need to do that same thing. It can be incredibly powerful. The next way I'm going to learn how to think on paper is to create what I call a project file. Now, for me, this is just a three-ring binder, and it's got all the projects I'm currently working on in. So now I've got my project binder. I've got a tab for each one of the projects, and now I open up the project and I work on the project in my binder. And it's basically a briefing tool. So now I need to do something. I go to work on the project. And now when I'm done, I summarize in my binder what I've done. Spent four hours working on this, doing this, summarize the exact specific steps. Then what I want you to do is write down the next key action steps. Here's the next three or four things that you need to do. If you write this down, if you write it as if a knowledgeable person could pick it up and pick up right where you left off, figure out, okay, what's been done on this project, this is really useful. What I found is that before I did this, I'd spend a huge amount of time trying to figure out, well, what did I do? I know I worked on this project and I have to recreate it. When I just summarized, here's what I've done, here's the next action steps, it's so easy to pick up where you left off. Now you can give it two hours here, pick up from it, and you don't have to get back in what I call that mental state. Oftentimes I'd have to sort of re-go through the whole project to figure out where I was. That's called a huge waste of time. Now, whenever you're ready to work on your project, or if you've got an assistant, a key agent that you're working with, you can give it to them, review it, and they'll know what you've done, and they'll know what's the next action step, where you are, and what they can do to move the project forward. This is incredibly powerful. I want you to make sure that at the end of each entry in your project book, you summarize the next action steps. This is incredibly useful. Here's the next three, four, five things I need to do on this project. So now you can pick that up and know here's the next action step, next action step in getting things done, learning to always leave yourself with next action steps is one of their big concepts. And I found it's so incredibly valuable. Utilize this and it will make a huge difference for you. For each transaction, I found this is also very useful. Many of these concepts are in the Hobbs Herder Listing Service Program because it tells you, here's what's done, been done, and then always tells you what's the next action step in there. That's why I want to use that listing service program. Now for everything you're doing in your life, use that same concept, this project folder, and it'll make a huge difference for you. Remember that it's not nearly looking at how many hours you put in. And so many times say, Greg, I'm working, you know, incredible hours. Whenever you're working lots of hours, I almost will always guarantee you 
you aren't getting a lot out of the hours. You aren't putting as much as you could into the hour. To help you really understand this, I'm going to think about it. Think about how much you get done right before you go on vacation, right before you make a move, right before you have anything significant coming up. It's amazing we get so many things done so quickly. One of the key principles I found is that in life, whatever we have to do expands to fill the time allotted. Jim said, it's, we sort of understand that. We'll, we'll take whatever time we have to get the project done. He says, the, the key understanding of this is that if we only give it a little time, we'll get it done in a little time. If we give it a lot of time, we'll get it done. And it's always a balance. If we give it too little, we won't do a great job. But if we give it too much, it's not going to get better and we'll just take a lot of time. So what I want you to do is say, realistically, how much time should I really allow for this? And make sure that you shrink the time allotted. This is such a key, important concept to understand. If you always think, gosh, tomorrow I'm going to be on vacation. I'm not going to be here you'd get a lot more done today. Mentally, trick yourself into doing this, thinking this way, and it will have a huge impact. The challenge is to master the distractions that come up into each and every day. Today, in our electronically driven world, it's so easy to be distracted by things that come up. It's so easy to get distracted by a YouTube video, a joke, a conversation, something around the coffee pot. Our cell phones, messaging, texting. But what I want you to do is get clear on your objectives. Realize that you will run each and every day or your day will run you. So here's what I want you to do. Make sure you don't ever start a day until you have it finished. And this takes 10 or 15 minutes, but it will dramatically increase your productivity. It'll give you an extra hour or two a day if you will do this. What I want you to do is every night before you go home, before you, you know, and if you're at home, take some time away, go into your office, go wherever you can to be alone and think about what do I need to get accomplished tomorrow and plan out tomorrow. Now, don't get what I call anal about this. Don't try and plan out five minute blocks, but first of all, rate tomorrow, what are the key priorities I need to make? I need to make these phone calls. I need to work on this. I need to do these. Make a list at it. Then prioritize them. Say, what are the most important things for tomorrow? Put the high priority activities first. Plan out your day and give it a basic general, gosh, I'm going to work an hour here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Now you've got other appointments. You've got phone calls. You've got things. You're going to work your schedule around, but make sure you get the highest priority items into each day. If you don't take that 10 minutes, what happens is you'll end up doing a lot of the low priority activities. Again, this is a way of using the 80-20 rule to maximum effectiveness. And you will find that you will get so much more done if you will do that. So don't start out the day until you have it finished. Write the key things you want to accomplish for the day. Prioritize it. What is the most valuable activity I can do? I want you to know that if you will focus on the highest couple activities every day, you will make incredible progress consistently. Terry Peranich, the top realtor up in Canada, has been, I think, one of my most incredible students this way. When he came to the Gateway, he said, Greg, it's overwhelming, the information, I don't even know where to start. I said, well, pick whatever is the most important to you. And Terry made a list of the things and he said, here are 12 things that I want to get done. And he was so creative. He, he said to me, Greg, he says, I know I'm not the brightest tack in the box, so I have to think things a little slower. I'm going to work on one of these projects for a month and then I'm going to move on to the next one. And at the end of the year, he had 12 projects completed. And he said, I just go to work every month at a new project and make it part and parcel of what I'm doing. 
And that's why he always gets better. He's improving all the time in what he does. By just taking a little step, say, saying, gosh, today I'm going to work on this. I'm going to keep moving forward. Then don't start your week until you have it finished. At the end of each week, take about an hour. And the first thing I want you to do is review the week. Take 20 minutes and just review the previous week and say, okay, this week, what worked, what didn't work? What did I get done? What did I not get done that I wanted to get done? And just think about it. Then lay out the next week. Now, when you're laying out a week, you're just getting it as granular. You're going to put it into priorities. Here's the key things I need to do. I'm going to do this on Monday, Tuesday, Friday. You lay out the week in a sort of a general fashion. But you have a good idea of everything you're going to be doing the week and the key priorities. I want you to make sure that you do this. Start by reviewing the past week. Look at the things you didn't get done, the things you did get done, and ask yourself why. And if you didn't do something and it didn't cause a problem, ask, gosh, can I just completely eliminate that? Do I still need to do it? If yes, put it in your calendar, put it on a date. If not, just drop it. There's a lot of things that we think we need to do that we actually don't need to. It's okay if they don't get done. Then make sure you lay out that complete week. Put it on the schedule so that your highest priority items get done. Now, this is what you're going to build each day from as well. Now, I also want you to make sure that you don't start the month before you have each month finished. And I really want you to take now a two, three, even a four-hour block at the end of each month and review your month. Look at each week, look at the days and say, okay, what's going on? This is where you get significantly big payoff in your time management. Now, it seems like we never have time to review, but unless you review, you're just going to repeat the same old things over and over again. And this is hard because we look at it and we start to see our patterns, our mistakes, where we're costing ourselves huge. So lay out the month. And I want you to review the month. Think about where you've made progress, where you haven't. Now, in your monthly plan, it's critical that you also are putting your personal life into your monthly plan. That time with kids, your spouse, the significant events of your life in there. Sometimes you can get away with not putting those into the day or the week. But unless you put them into the month, it's amazing how the years will go by and you'll say, gosh, I, I wish I could have gotten there. I wish I would have spent more time with my family, my kids. But make sure you put that in there. Let me tell you, I learned this the hard way. It cost me a marriage. Don't make the same mistake I did. Put your personal life. Fortunately, the second time around with Janet, it's been so much better because we think about what's really important to us. Now, when you're laying out the month, a couple of things. Don't get too granular. Don't get too specific. What you're going to do on the month is make sure this is where the big rocks, those 80% or the 20% things, the big things that you need to put into your life are there. Make sure that you put those right into your plan and just move them into a week. And then wait until you're working on the week to really make sure that it's into that week. This will make a huge difference for you. Now, I want you to start the, don't start the year before you have the year finished. Now, I tell people this, that you really should take a week off every year. Every October, November, take a week and go away and just review the year that you just went through. Spend a half a day reviewing it, thinking about what worked, what didn't. Where did I come? Where did my goals? Review their goals from the year before. See where you made progress, where you didn't. Now, clarify your values and then work on your goals for the year ahead. Plan out each month sort of the big pieces, the vacations, the learning, the educational things, 
the things that are going to help you grow personally and professionally, then the key marketing activities are your year. You're going to put these out, you know, strategically. You're going to think about them and then put them to a plan, assign them to a month, so that now when you're working on your month, you can put those into the weeks. The weeks can come into the days. This makes a huge difference. What you want to do with your year-long planning is come up with what I call that annual game plan. Now, this is going to be the big picture. Here's the things I'm going to do. Now, when you're doing this planning, don't get too granular yet. Think about it, but put the priorities in there. There are so many famous, incredibly wealthy people that talk about the importance of taking a year off or a week off every year to plan. Bill Gates has done this. He's written a couple of books about it. The importance of going and getting away, thinking about what's really important. And then thinking about how to plan out the year ahead to make progress. Let me tell you, this will make a huge difference for you. Now, during this process, really set up all your priorities. Outline the broad steps you're going to take each month and the year ahead. The next thing that will really help you is once you've got this consistent pattern of thinking on paper, I want you to tap into the power of concentration. And concentration is getting uninterrupted times that you can really concentrate on the tasks that need uninterrupted effort. Starting and stopping is a huge waste of time. If you have a project that you can get done in less than five hours, let me tell you, it's better to set up a five-hour block and get the entire project done. You will spend a lot less time and the project will actually turn out better than if you do an hour here, an hour there. I mean, now, if there's no other way to do it, break it up into the time things, but if there's any way to block out the time, you'll get it much more effectively done. I want you to think about it. Think about meeting preparation, meetings with your clients, Make sure you're doing all of that in advance. You've blocked out the time. I will tell you as a realtor, if you block out time to do your comps, make sure, just like we talked about the seminar, you're doing your comps, your listing presentation work before the day of the presentation. It will make a huge difference. Also, if you're going to review a contract, you really need to pay attention to the details. Block out a set of time. Turn off all the distractions, your computer, the cell phones, and now work on it. This is the same of blogging, writing. Now, the funny thing is, is that if you actually set aside some time, this is what I'm going to do, and then just work on that, you're going to be much more productive. Also, block out time for strategic planning so that you're thinking about what activities are going to get you the most productive. Also think about making sure you're blocking out some time to review your profits and loss statements. Every month, you need to take a few minutes and review. This month, how much did I earn? How much were my expenses? What was my net profit? It's funny. The very best agents, the people like Phil Herman, Alan Dom, that are doing extraordinarily well, if you ask them, how much did you make this month, they can tell you to the penny. This is how much I made. This is how much I spent. The average agent, they will tell you, well, how much I earned? Well, how much were your expenses? Well, uh, uh, I spent a bunch. I don't know. So how much was your net profit? See, as a CEO, you've got to know what your net profit is each and every month. Most agents just, oh, I'll let it, you know, it's, it's coming. I don't have that much control. No, you got to know. This makes a huge difference. If you don't track your numbers, if you don't know, you are going to find that it will come back to bite you. And let me tell you, it will take a huge amount of time dealing with it. Also, learn how to say no without guilt. I used to want to say yes to everything. And I said yes to a lot of things. And then I spent a lot of time getting out of things that I didn't want to do. And it always took a lot longer to get out of it than if I would have said no up front. I wanted people to like me. I wanted this. I wanted approval. I don't know exactly what it was. But don't let your mouth overload your back. Never, ever say yes to something that you don't really want to do. And if you're unsure, always say no just in case and say, gosh, if I change my mind, I can 
say yes. I have learned that it will cost you more than you can ever imagine if you don't learn how to say no. Now, to help you learn how to say no effectively, I highly recommend the book Nonviolent Communication by Marshall Rosenberg. I've talked about this book in many of these calls. One of the things that it talks about is that if you do something for any reason other than you really want to, you're excited about it. If you do it out of guilt, shame, the other person's going to end up paying for it because it's going to come out in resentment, frustration. So learn how to say no and it will keep your relationships better. It will keep your life much more on track. Now, I'm going to give you something that if you will do, will have a huge impact for you. And I guarantee you the payoff is absolutely phenomenal. Learn how to touch paper, email, everything electronic once. If you learn how to touch things once, it will save you a huge amount of time. I want you to realize this. When dealing with incoming correspondents of all types, use the following system. I want you to walk through, through this. It is the best system I've ever used. It will make you an incredible advantage. First of all, only check email, mail, anything, when you have at least 20 minutes to focus. If you come in and say, gosh, let me check my email before I'm going out on an appointment. Let's say you got a really important email. Now you're totally unfocused. It's going to ruin your next meeting. Don't go there. This is one of those disciplines. Unless you have time to deal with the things as they come up, just don't find out about them. The email is sent there. If somebody is that urgent, they would call you. This is so important. Now, take each item that comes in, each email that you get one at a time. Now, I realize there's a lot of spam. You're going to delete a lot of things instantly. If you think something will take less than five minutes to complete, do that item. Whether it's calling and leaving a message, sending a reply email, printing the email out, taking it, putting it in a file, whatever needs to be done, if you can do it in less than five minutes, do it right then and there so it's done. You don't have to think about it anymore. Then, if you think something's going to take longer than five minutes to complete, what I want you to do, if it's truly important, delegate it to somebody else if you have an assistant, if you can. If it's something only you can do, pull out your calendar right then and there and put it on the calendar so that now you have a specific time to go and handle that item. Now, if you think you may want to come back to something, you just say, I can't make a decision and I, I want you to eliminate as many of these things as possible to decide. If you're not 90% sure you really want to come back to it, just trash it. I guarantee you it's not that important. If you think you might want to come back to it, you just can't make a decision. What I want you to do is file it for emails. Have a file, things I wanted to save. Just put it in there. If it's a physical piece of paper, have a file, things I may want to review one day and put it in there. Now, here's what I want you to do. Throw everything else away. Remember, with today's technology, if you really had to find something again, you'd probably be able to get it. It's not totally off the planet. So don't worry about trashing things. It will keep your life so much simpler. Then, I also want you to file things effectively. What I want you to do is get a file system where you have a 31-day file 31 file folders, and then an additional 12 for every month of the year. So you have January through December. Now, what I want you to do is take the 31 days of the day and put them to whatever month you're in. If something comes in, let's say you open up some mail and you have a bill and, you know, it's July 15th and you say, well, gosh, I need to pay this bill on July 28th. Now, just drop that bill into the 28th file. If you need to make a phone call to Mary on July 25th, write on a piece of paper, call Mary about swimming lessons for the kids on July 25th. Drop that into the 25th file. 
And whatever you need to do, now, if it's in November, it's July right now, and you say, gosh, I need to do this in November. Take a pile, drop it in the November file. So now, all the things you need to do in the future are there. Now, each day when you're planning tomorrow, pull out that day's file and say, oh, here are the things I need to do so you can look and put it in the plan. And now you're going through each day. At the end of the month, when you're planning the next month, look at all the things in next month's file. You pull out all the piles that are in August and say, okay, what day of the month do we need to put it then? And now put those into the 30-day files. This will give you what I call a perfect memory. None of the little details will fall through the cracks. And now this is a rotating file. Notice this file is never storing things long term. It's always active. It's got the next year laid out. I will tell you, it is an incredibly practical system if you will use that. Also, go to work at making yourself more valuable. I found if you work at being more valuable, it's so powerful. We talk about this all the time. It's your personal development. Working on your own personal development is one of the easiest ways to get more out of your time. Read a book on time management. Read a book on what your priorities are. Attend the lectures. Always be learning and growing. Let me tell you, I've read a couple hundred time management books and I'm still got a lot to learn. I'm still not perfect at it. And that's how we get better. I also want you to make sure that you recharge yourself. Meditate 20 minutes every single day. Now, I know you're saying, Greg, you've just given me a whole lot of stuff to do. I got to think on paper, plan the week, the day, the month, the year. Who's got time to meditate? You do. And here's why. If you will meditate for 20 minutes a day, your mind will be so much calmer. This is proven research. If you will just meditate for 20 minutes a day, you'll be able to deal with the stress, the things that happen, and you'll be calmer and better about dealing with everything. It will save you more than the 20 minutes every day. Then make sure you exercise at least four days a week. The most important times to exercise is when you feel like it the least, because now you're stressed. You say, gosh, it's been a tough day. Go release all of those things. Get the endorphins pumping. This takes some discipline, but let me tell you, for your long-term health, for your own mental mindset, you've got to do this. Then take regular time off. Again, at the seminar, I talk about this. Take at least one, two days a week off. Then take a long weekend every month. Take at least three weeks of vacation every year. Then make sure that when you're at work, you work. When you're at play, you play. Don't mix the two. So many agents go on vacation. They're worried about what's happening at the office. I just had Jada Sparks, the wonderful agent from uh, Indiana. At the seminar I did there recently, her daughter turned 16 this year. And for the month of June, she took the entire month off with her daughter to travel Europe. She said, I had an absolutely fabulous time. I told my team, my staff, here's what to do. Don't call me unless it's absolutely the direst emergency. And she went, was gone for 30 full days, didn't talk to the office once. When she came back, she had six new listings, had a fabulous month. And she didn't have to deal with the office at all. And she said, Greg, I will never have an experience like this with my 16-year-old daughter. Make sure you do that. What I want to do is now open it up to questions about what we've talked about here today. How many people should I send my first direct mail campaign to? I have received a list of 4,000 people in four different zip codes and it'll be my target. So basically, the way to figure this out is to figure out what your goals are. And remember, use the formula we gave at the seminar. Take the number of transactions that you want, double it by two, and say, I need to figure out an area that has twice as much turnover as that goal. So if you want to do 25 transactions, find an area where there's 50 homes selling, and then figure out based on the turnover rate, whatever it is in your area, 4%, 5%, 6%, that'll determine how big that farm should be. 
And that's always the best way. There's no one magic number that works for everybody. It's depending upon your goals. The question is, do you offer coaching on these steps? It seems like this is needed. We do offer coaching, um, and part of these are you know, practical, and, and I'm going to post this video or this, this webinar so you can go back and review it. If you'd like to work with one of our coaches, we have a wonderful coach, Coach Kathleen, that will work with you on breaking it down into very specific details. If you have any questions about that, just drop me an email, and I'll have Kathleen call you and talk about our coaching services. The next question is, this material is great. Here's a copy of available audio. Yes, I will post this. It'll probably take me a few days to uh, get this posted, but I will post it, and it'll be on YouTube and on the Hobbs Herder, so you can go through it and listen to it on a regular basis. As a graduate of many Hobbs Herder courses, am I able to get access to the listing service folder? Yes. At the seminar, we gave you a uh, password for the Hobbs Herder exclusive site. And if you've lost that somewhere, give us a call and uh, we'll look you up on our system, give you a password, and you can download the listing service program and it will definitely make a huge difference for you. Will you send the PowerPoint on this webinar? Yeah, the, the, I'll create the video and uh, hopefully I've answered that and we'll post that so everybody can see it. Can you explain the 31 file day calendar again? I can definitely try and let me tell you, this is such a practical system. So you're going to get 31 day calendars and this is for each day of the month. Now, if there's only 28 days in the month, you're only going to file things in 28 days, but you're still going to keep all 31 because you have 31 days in some of the months of the year. Then you're going to get 12 file folders for the months of the year, January through December. And basically, whatever comes in, if you need to take care of it at some time during the next year, if it's July and something comes in you need to handle in September, you just drop it into the September month. Now, at the beginning of each month, you take whatever is in that month and you put it into the 31 days, okay? Here's these things and today I'm going to handle this. I'm going to put this on the 5th, this on the 7th. And now what I found is that you never have to hold things in what I call your mental memory. You don't have to have that worry in the back. Gosh, when do I need to get this done? When do I need to get my continuing education done? Everything is in your file folder and it's so incredibly powerful because it drives your activities forward. All right. The next question is, what was the title of the book of the month again? And the book of the month was called Getting Things Done. And it is a great book. It's a one of the best sellers on time management. And it's great that way. Yeah. And <laughs> the, the folders come. I've stole it right out of Getting Things Done by David Allen. And it's awesome. It's a wonderful system out there. So thank you, Dan, for the recommendation. And uh, the folder, 40, it is 47 folders and it works so well. So other questions. Also, I would love your feedback. I always want to know, was this useful, valuable? I would love it if you would go to my Facebook page, either facebook.com forward slash Greg Herter or Hobbs Herter. Write your comments about this coaching session. Send me an email. I always love getting emails, feedback, seeing posts. I want to help you succeed in your real estate career. So I want you to know I'm accessible. Please don't hesitate to drop me an email. Call me if we can help you in any way. My goal is to make sure that you're growing and getting better each and every month. Also, go to HobbsHerderCalls.com and make sure you register for next month's coaching webinar. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like me to cover, I'm open to ideas. I'm always going to be trying to get things that will move you forward, help make you more productivity in building your business in the year ahead. I want to thank you for your time, your attention here today. I greatly appreciate it.